We unveiled our team in our 40 and 40. We are previewing the ponies today. The Mustangs of SMU out in Dallas. Their head coach, Rhett Lashley, joins us now on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Welcome in, Coach. Hope you're doing well today. Doing well. How are y'all doing? Doing fantastic. I suppose at some point I'll get used to refer, uh, referring to you as an ACC school, but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, it's, I know it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty cool time in, uh, in your program's history going to the ACC. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're, we're trying to get used to it ourselves. Uh, all happening pretty fast. You know, usually you get schools change conferences. They have about, you know, two or three years to get ready for it. We've had 10 months and uh, I guess officially on July 1st, we're we're a new member of the ACC and excited about the schedule and just the, you know, our program has a rich history. You know, a lot of schools that have made the jump in the last, you know, 10, 15 years, we're making the jump for the first time. Our school was you know, a power in the Southwest Conference for many years. And so, you know, from our fan base to our school and in our city, we just kind of feel like we're back, you know, on the stage that we feel like we can belong and we're excited to uh, to be a part of a great league. Most programs, when they go from a group five to a power five, it takes a little bit of a transition. But we were previewing your team in the last segment and I said, not to put extra pressure on you, <laughs> I would assume, though, that the expectation is you guys <laughs> can actually make noise this year and possibly play for an ACC championship. I would assume that's your goals with what you've coming, got coming back production-wise. Well, it's, it's definitely our goals, but you're not supposed to say those things. You know? You're supposed to say, oh, man, if they can win two or three games, that'll be a good first year. <laughs> you know, uh, to your point, yes, it, it's a jump, you know, it, it's, it's moving up in weight class, uh, for a good analogy, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, we proved last year, we went on the road to Oklahoma and had a chance to win in the fourth quarter and we've beaten TCU and we've won games, you know, our school in the last five years is we've won more games than any school in the state of Texas, any division one school, we won a championship, all that, but playing two or three power opponents a year versus 10 is a difference, right? And, it's the week in, week out, um, the physicality, the depth, and how quickly can we get acclimated to that? Um, you saw the four schools that went into the Big 12 last year. I mean, not one of them had a winning record, and UCF at, at six and seven is the only one that went to a bowl game. So there's definitely a transition. Uh, we got to be realistic about that. At the same time, yeah, our expectations, we've been doing everything we can to – to put a team together that can come in and compete. And um, that's our goal every year. And now we just want to be Roy Jones Jr. and try to win it in another weight class. So. Uh, listen, I... Hey, the cool thing is we're defending champs. I just don't know what we're defending. <laughs> that's a good point. Very yeah. true. That's, that's right. That's right. You so. and Florida State, two defending champs in one conference there. Um, and, and that's our first conference game. We play each other. So, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> and that'll be there in, uh, in Dallas. It'll be a lot of fun. I used to... Um, I used to sit right next to Lauren. We used to share the same uh, person that would cut our hair. I obviously don't need that anymore. Uh, back when you were at Sanford. Uh, so we, we wouldn't share that anymore if you were still here in Birmingham. But from Sanford to uh, all, you know everywhere you've stopped for, as an offensive coordinator uh, to being a head coach, I've always liked your joy of being where your feet are. Can you tell me something you like about being a head coach that was better than when you were an offensive coordinator? Like, do you still you still call your own plays? Do you enjoy that? <laughs> or do you occasionally miss just being the OC guy? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I uh, I do still call the plays, um, or at least I have the first two years, and I will this year. You know, I, it's different. You know, you think, hey, I've been an OC for 12 years. You know, maybe I led a staff of 10 to 12 people and coached 50 of the guys on the team, and, hey, being a head coach is just doubling that, right? No, it's 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 different. <laughs> but um, you know, I think the thing that's probably nice is on one hand, you don't have to ask permission to do things, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, there's a lot of people looking at you. Um, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy being with our staff, whether it was as a coordinator or, or the head coach, and there's more responsibility. But we got, I got great coaches, and I got a great staff of people that make my job easy they're the ones who do a lot of the work they're the ones who deserve the credit for the success we've been able to have and uh, hopefully the success we'll continue to have um you know now the part that you did say about you know kind of the old be where your feet are saying like i was actually at sanford in 2011 pat sullivan hired me when i was 27 to be the oc at sanford he had no business doing it i have no idea why he did it and i'm thankful he did it and i remember you know getting that job and it 
27, you know, you're, it's almost like being a young kid again, you just know everything. Right. And so, um, I go through the spring and, you know, man, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I'm going to win. And then I'm going to move up here and here. And I went through spring ball and real quick realized this coaching thing's kind of hard. And so, uh, I remember sitting in my office in June by myself and just being like, wow, how cool is this? You're 27. Our twin boys who are 13 now, were just a year old, not even a year old. We were living in Birmingham, working for a guy like Pat Sullivan, who's just incredible. And I just remember thinking, man, how cool is this? You're getting to call plays. Just man, enjoy it. Because if you don't do a good job where you are, the next whatever is not going to happen anyways. And I don't know. For, fortunately, that day, God gave me a mental shift that's allowed me to just really enjoy every stop of our journey. And uh, my wife's been the same and, and we're just kind of grateful for where we are. And it's allowed us to really have some good experiences. From Pat Sullivan to Gus Malzahn, how difficult is it to be an offensive coordinator when you've got an offensive head coach where <laughs> if the offense is, is crushing it, the head coach gets credit, but if the offense struggles, the offense coordinator takes the blunt of the, uh, the blame. Right. And I got Casey Woods, who was at UAB, who's doing that for me now. You know, he knows that, all the plays that work, I called. And all the ones that don't work, he called. It's just kind of how it works. And uh, I had great training with Gus doing that for a long time. You know, uh, everyone's been different. You know, Gus obviously very involved. Probably half the time I was his coordinator, he called it, and then half the time I did. And but then I worked for Pat Sullivan, and I worked for Sonny Dykes, and two offensive guys that I ran it, and they didn't have anything to do with it. They didn't, you know, they didn't come in there and sit in meetings or say, do this and do that. I mean, they were the head coach. They set the standard on everything, but they let me run it. And so, you know, I think as a coach, you want that responsibility and that um, opportunity, but Hey, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And when you're the OC, it's your job to, to honor and, and support the head coach and, Try to do that the best I could with whichever scenario it was. SMU coach Rhett Lashley with us for a few more moments on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. I love everything about SMU. I'm going to be on your campus, in fact, uh, in a few days. I love your campus. Great. Yeah, I mean, I love the spot where it is in uh, the Highland Park area. Um, yeah, I wanted my daughter to go to SMU. She did not. That was going to be a long trip for her. She chose not to do that. But I wanted her to go there. I encouraged her to go there. The thing I love most, though, are those uniforms. Uh, Y'all have got the best <laughs> uniform in college football. Do you have a – Really? Okay. Yeah, I think you Let's do. Go. I think you do. Do you have a particular favorite of one of the uniforms you wear? Man, I love I, – I don't have a favorite. I love our traditional blue SMU with the pony. Yes. I love our all-white with the pony. Now, our players, I'm wearing a black hat, the blue Triple D. You know, my first year we brought a – one time a year, we wear a black alternate uniform, and that's the ones they love. Uh, very very Mavericks-like as well. Yeah. So shout out to the Mavs. When in Dallas. I mean, look, there's something. We The Rangers won a, a championship. We won a championship. The Mavs are in the final. Stars are trying to get there. Uh, a lot of good things going on around here right now. But I, we will have a kind of a teaser. We'll actually have a, a new uniform this year. Oh. It's very traditional. But we're going to add another, kind of go back to a – uniform style that's been worn here before but it's a, it hadn't been in a while so yeah i mean we like to, to to mix it up enough where our guys enjoy it it's good for recruiting it's good for morale at the same time i've always believed when you turn the tv on if you don't know who's playing you've gone too far with the uniforms and so um that's that's the balance we try to to, to walk speaking of uniforms in your shadow box behind you <laughs> right at 12 o'clock <laughs> that is the best jersey in the history of jerseys the rams away jersey back in the day i'm a huge rams guy eric dickerson you need to work on the, the yep. rams logo in the uh bottom right there that's that, that <laughs> it's was the new school logo i'm with you yeah. but, but, I, but i heard your boys you mentioned your twin boys i heard they've got over 100 nfl jerseys combined is that true Really? Where'd you hear that? A hundred? Yeah. I, 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 I saw it in an old interview with you. They've got a lot of uh, former NFL quarterback jerseys that they wear all the time. Yeah. A hundred may seem high, okay. but I don't know. I'm not counted. They do. They, uh, they've got, they've got quite a collection. They like the jerseys. I don't know. I have, now you got me interested. I may go count them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You haven't been looking at that Amex. Your wife's been running up. <laughs> yeah, just, I, no, I've learned. Don't look. What you don't know doesn't upset you. So, uh, as long as I can go and I can get a bottle of water or something to eat, I don't ask questions. Uh, I got, I got a video, uh, that I recorded walk, you walking off the field in Pasadena in 2013, 2013 season that loss at Auburn. And yeah. uh, we tapped you on our show back then. You were going to be a future head coach. We were just, we just thought the world of you. Uh, does, does a loss like that still, still hang, hang on your heart sometimes? Oh yeah. You don't remember the wins. You remember those. I remember 
Uh, I won a state championship ninth, 10th, and 12th grade in high school. And I remember losing in the overtime of the championship game my junior year more than those other three. And yeah, we won it in 10 with Cam Newton, but you know, we, that one, that one hurt. Obviously we lost it in the last 13 seconds and the, I don't know what you have, but my boys were about three then. And I remember them being down. They didn't even know why, but they were crying, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, but that's what's so great about our sport and our game. It's life. It allows you to live the ups, the downs, the all in between and, and all the different emotions you get to experience. And, you know, for every, for every time you've had your heart broken like that, you've also been there for a kick six. And so, um, yeah, but definitely you think about the misses definitely more than the wins. So 15 years ago, you got out of coaching for a couple of years. You started a magazine with your brother in Arkansas. I would assume coaching easier than magazine business right now. <laughs> right now, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know to coach right now. We don't we don't have enough shows to talk about that. No, I I got a chance to GA at Arkansas in 2006 with Gus and Houston Nutt was the head coach who were my college and high school coaches. And then, yeah, I was going to Tulsa with Gus the next year. Long story short, I, I chose not to and then realized I got to do something. And so for about 20, 22 months, I was out of coaching and had to get into this real world. It took me about six months to realize, okay, I guess coaching's all I can do, so I need to find a way to get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, we wish you all the best. Good catching up with you again. We appreciate you making some time for us in, uh, in what is always a busy summer for coaches. Uh, it's great. Appreciate you having me on. Make sure you all temper the expectations That's right. just a little bit more than you're doing right now. 11 and 1. Uh, 11 yeah. and 1. <laughs> Thank you for that. Our, our viewers have you at 29, 94 viewers who voted on our ranking. So that's under. We we all have you higher than yeah, that. I had you top See, 200. They, they, knew, they knew not to put us in the top 25. So tell them thank you. <laughs> Sandbagging. <laughs> thank you, Coach. Have a great weekend. You too. All right. That is Rhett Lashley, the SMU head coach, with us on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline.